forest fire problem so assume that there are four rows say three rows and four columns of trees separated by separated by water bodies water bodies and rock areas as discussed yesterday okay say so one stands for tree zero stands for water body and two stands for minus one stands for rocky area okay uh, i'll show you in paint brush that this is a, a representation of forest there are three rows and four columns as i told you one stands for a tree zero stands for water body and minus 1 stands for rocky area and this is a situation tree water body water body tree rocky area water body rocky area water body water body tree water body and tree okay assume that the fire started at 00 cell the fire started at northwest corner so 00 cell the fire can travel in all eight directions the fire can travel in all eight directions if possible the fire cannot cross cannot cross a rocky area can cross one water body but not two in succession but not two in succession okay now fire started here it cannot go down because there is a rocky area here it cannot reach this tree because there are two water bodies in succession so this is safe if there is one water body it can cross or this will catch fire and this will also catch fire and this will also catch fire so all trees will catch fire now even though there are some rocky areas okay is this clear so i represent catching of fire by 2 okay so i'll show you a live demonstration of this in python the current position is shown like this say this is a tree and this is water body now rocky area and this is water body and this is rock area fine now yes this is water body and this is this is tree now assume that the fire started at 00 position 00 position okay 
now it can travel in eight directions this is top left top top right this is left j minus 1 j plus 1 is right bottom left j minus 1 bottom j bottom right j plus 1 i'll explain the logic later so let us see the output okay so please compare one the here the fire started the fire travels through water once it catches fire it also caught fire it also caught fire okay okay but when there are two it did not it did not travel in this direction but it traveled in this direction okay suppose suppose this is water body then at least one tree is safe and at least one tree is safe so i hope you understand it okay i implemented this using the following logic most of it was explained yesterday most of it was explained yesterday So, Charan Teja, is this clear? Is this clear? So, the logic used was, the logic used was, I'll explain the logic. if next cell is having tree fire it fire it and add that cell add that cell to q to q this is that if next cell is having a tree fire it and add it to q next if next cell is if next cell is having is a water body is a water body don't fire it now don't fire it now okay keep it keep it for future reference because next may be three if next next cell is water body and current cell is also water body is also water body then don't add it to q don't add it to q okay so this is a logic if next cell is three next cell is water body but current cell is not water body then only you proceed and if tree if tree then only fire okay check with one if water don't fire okay so students please respond is this clear is this clear Somebody is calling. Hello? I am in class. Okay? Is this clear? So please respond. The chat box is for that purpose. Chat box is there for that purpose. Is the logic clear? Okay, now let us go to the problems which were asked in Mark Vita yesterday. 
So this is minimum number of kinds problem. Minimum number of kinds problem. Minimum number of kinds problem. Title as title as fill land, fill fill a land. Kinds problem. This was the title, I think. Let us reduce the font size. Okay. So you need to find out minimum number of coins required. to pay say rupees n rupees from from rupees 1 to rupees n rupees n okay using using one rupee note or one rupee coin Two rupees note or coin, and and five rupees coin or note. So you have only one rupee coin, two rupee coin, and five rupee coin. Using that, you need to pay all amounts from one to n rupees. Say rupees five. Okay. For example, you need to pay one rupee. So one rupee coin is enough. You need to pay both one rupee and two rupee. You need to pay both one rupees and two rupees. For one rupee, one coin is enough. For two rupees, if you use only two rupee coin, by using this you cannot pay. You cannot pay one rupee. You cannot pay one rupee. So only alternative is using two one rupee coins. So if you use two one rupee coins. Two one rupee coins. You can pay. You can you can pay both one rupee and and two rupees. Okay. If you have only one two rupee coin, if you have only one two rupee coin, then you can pay only. You can pay only two rupees. Using two rupee coin, you cannot pay one rupee. So I hope you understand it. Now, to pay one rupee, two rupees, three rupees, you can use one one rupee coin and one two rupee coin. Okay. If you have these two coins, you can pay one rupee. You can pay two rupees. You can pay three rupees. Now, to pay four rupees. To pay one rupee, two rupee, four rupees. If you have two two rupee coins, then you cannot pay. You cannot pay three rupees, and you cannot pay one rupee. So only alternative is you can have two one rupee coins and and one two rupee coin. Okay. Okay. Then to pay five rupees, you may think that one five rupee coin is enough. Yes. To pay five rupees, five rupee coin is enough. But you cannot pay four with it. You cannot pay three with it. You cannot pay two with it. So what is alternative? One one rupee coin and two two rupees coins. Using these three, the above denominations can also be paid. Okay. This is clear. And please observe one thing. For odd denomination, we have one. One rupee coin is used for even denominations. For even denomination, we used two one rupee coins. So keep this.
keep this in mind because we are going to use it to 1 rupee coins okay is this clear to pay 2 rupees 2 1 rupee coins are used to pay 4 rupees 2 1 rupee coins are used to pay 3 rupees only 1 1 rupee coin to pay 5 only 1 1 rupee coin are you following it so please let me know so to pay 6 tell me to pay 6 So to pay 2 rupees only one say to pay 2 rupees alone one 2 rupee kind is enough but but read here read here minimum number of coins to pay rupees from rupees from 1 to n rupees from 1 to n kalpana did you understand not just 2 rupees not just 2 rupees to pay 1 rupee as well as 2 rupees miss kalpana is this clear some sometimes i may pay 1 rupee only sometimes i may pay 2 rupees only okay is this clear kalpana is not responding okay to pay 6 2 1 rupee coins and 2 2 rupee coins to pay 7 to pay 7 1 1 rupee coin and 3 2 rupee coins to pay 8 to pay 8 2 1 rupee coins and 3 2 rupees coins okay now the million dollar question to pay 9 rupees to pay 9 rupees tell me what is required the special case to pay 9 rupees special case I want to pay 9 rupees. Here I can go for 5 rupee coin. And, and, uh, 2 1 rupee coins and 1 2 rupee coin. Okay. Now using these 4, I can pay 8, I can pay 7, I can pay 6, I can pay 5, I can pay 4, I can pay 3, I can pay 2, I can pay 1. Is this clear? Is this clear? See, I have 5 rupee coin also. I have 5 rupee coin also. And my criteria is minimum number of coins. Minimum number of coins. If I use 4 2 rupees, 4 2 rupees and 1 1 rupee, 5 coins are required. But I could pay it using 4 coins. Okay. To reduce number of coins, to reduce number of coins, I should use maximum of maximum of 5 rupee coins okay and and minimum of minimum of 1 rupee coins is this clear is this clear i should use as many coins as possible of 5 type and as less as possible of 1 type so to pay 9 to pay 9 how many I need? How many 5 rupees coins I need? 5. To pay 14. To pay 14. 2 5 rupee coins. And 2 1 rupee coins. And 1 2 rupee coin. Okay. Okay. Clear. Listen to it very carefully. For 9 rupees. To pay 9 rupees, to pay 9 rupees, need 1 5 rupee coin. 1 5 rupee coin. To pay 14 rupees, you need, you need 2 5 rupee coins. Okay, now if you observe very clearly, to pay n rupees, to pay n rupees, you need n minus 4, n minus 4 by 5 coins. Okay, take integer division. 
okay i'll apply it say 9 minus 4 9 minus 4 by 5 if you take integer division this is 1 now 14 minus 4 14 minus 4 okay by 5 you get what you get what 2 so one logic is derived to pay to pay rupees n need n minus 4 n minus 4 by 5 5 rupee coins is this clear is this clear now if now find out remaining amount remaining amount remaining amount is n minus n minus suppose this is x this is x number of 5 rupee coins are x ok n minus x into n n minus x into 5 for example 14 minus x is 2 what is x x is 2 2 into 5 so after using 5 rupee coins how much is left 4 rupees is left ok this is clear if remaining is divisible by 2 that is even then you need 2 1 rupee coins then you need 2 1 rupee coins okay if this is not 0 that is if remaining is odd you need 1 1 rupee coin okay this is clear so you know number of 5 rupee coins you know number of 5 rupee coins which is nothing but which is nothing but n minus 4 by 5 the issue is settled with this now number of 1 rupee coin number of 1 rupee coins depends upon remaining if remaining is even it is 2 if remaining is odd if remaining is odd it is 1 ok this is clear now only one issue to be settled what is that number of 2 rupee coins number of 2 rupee coins ok this is clear so this is total amount minus minus amount paid with 5 rupees ok minus say 1 rupee coins ok divided by divided by divided by 2 what is y number of 1 rupee coins y is x is number of 5 rupee coins y is number of 1 rupee coin is this clear is this clear did you understand it is this clear Is this clear? Yes or no? Now, let us implement it. Writing Python program.
ओके Try to reduce the size of this window so that you all can see it. And I can see your responses. I should further reduce it by a little bit. Okay, let us start a new program. So first, read. The maximum amount you want to pay. Read the maximum amount you want to pay. The maximum amount you want to pay. So let us read it from outside. Now we have five rupee coins, one rupee coin, and two rupee coins. First, let let x is x is number of five rupee coins. Let y is number of number of 1 rupee coins let z is number of number of 2 rupee coins okay now x is equal to n minus 4 Okay, and I take integer division, so double division, or you can you can type cast, you can type cast, convert this to integer. Okay, this is clear. Next, find out remaining. What is remaining amount? Remaining amount is n minus number of kinds of five into five. This is remaining amount. Okay. So let us save this. As example, one of the day in codes. And let us find out the remaining first. Print remaining. Okay. I take N as I take n as say 27 okay so how many how many kinds of how many kinds of five rupees are used how many kinds of five rupees are used four okay and what is the remaining amount what is the remaining amount seven is this clear is this clear now if if remaining is odd If remaining is even, if remaining is even, then one rupee coins are two. Otherwise, one rupee coins are one. Okay, next. So I want number of coins of two. This is remaining amount minus minus y y into 1 is y itself okay divided by divided by 2 okay i want to take integer division of it so that point 0 will not come
okay now print print say five rupee coins two rupee coins and one rupee coins so for this simple problem in mark vita is given lot of text verbose to confuse you okay now i want to pay reminder mod 2 now i want to pay 24 27 rupees from 1 to 27 okay so you can see here what are the minimum number of coins required what are the minimum coins required you can count them okay how many how many eight coins okay is this clear is this clear four five are twenty twenty six twenty seven hope you understand it clear you can find it for any amount you can find it for any amount i want to pay 99 rupees so how many coins 19 kinds of 5 maximize 5 rupee coin and minimize 1 rupee coin okay is this clear did you understand it see it all depends upon the logic we use and the patterns the payment has okay so i hope you understand it okay we will go to next problem if it is clear next problem is prime fibonacci problem problem number 2 prime fibonacci problem given two numbers in such a way that say numbers are m and n given two numbers m and n in such a way that n minus m is greater than 35 n minus m is greater than 35 now find all prime numbers all prime numbers between between n and m okay so it depends on the a rule inclusive or exclusive inclusive of inclusive of n and m and sorry between m and n between m and n okay inclusive of m and m and n this is first step okay is this is clear suppose suppose first number is 1 second number is 
what are primes between m and n 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 23 29 31 isn't it this is clear these are primes between 1 to 36 okay is this clear now generate all unique combinations with these with these numbers the combinations are with one with first number 2 3 2 4 2 5 2 3 2 5 2 7 2 3 2 5 2 7 2 11 2 13 and so on up to and so on up to 2 31 okay next with 3 unique combination 3 3 is not allowed 3 2 3 5 3 7 and so on up to 3 31 okay so finally finally 31 2 31 2 31 3 okay and so on up to and so on up to 31 29 okay is this clear that these are unique combinations now find find primes from unique unique combinations from unique combinations okay suppose minimum prime is 23 out of these primes minimum prime is 23 and maximum prime is for example 3129 okay now taking 23 as first number of Fibonacci series 3129 as second number of Fibonacci series Fibonacci series find out 34th term of the series 34th term of the series okay so this is a statement did you understand it so Pritam I will address you later first of all let us concentrate on this problem so did you understand the problem statement did you understand problem statement So what about the rest of the people? Only Srinivas God is responding. Okay. Is the problem statement clear? Now let us solve it in Python. Read two numbers. Read two numbers. Okay. So M and M and N. Let us call that as a range range is user you uh, system word i use capital r for it i need comma separated values to split them at comma because they are strings you map them into integers 
and then convert this to list convert this to list okay so m is first number of the range and n is second number of the range so print print m and m and n i take m as 1 and n as 40 my input contains two numbers 1 and 40 1 and 40 okay okay so m is 1 and n is 40 now for i in range m to n plus 1 because both are both are inclusive in steps of 1 now generate generate primes initially the list of primes is empty the list of primes is empty now if if i is prime if i is prime then append i to the list of primes append i to the list of primes okay okay and then let us print the list of primes fine so for this you need you need prime function which is a boolean function and define is prime input is a dummy variable n okay so if n is less than 2 then n is not prime in that case return return false i have been explaining it since the beginning of this year now start with i equal to 2 while i is less than or equal to n by 2 again take integer division because iterable cannot be float if n is divisible by i then n is not prime then n is not prime okay if n is not prime by dividing with i take next i and repeat the process okay and finally if it is not prime then return true if it is prime then return true okay okay now let us run and find out primes between 1 and 40 say 1 comma 1 comma 40 append spelling is wrong one more n let us run it say 1 comma 40 say please look at the screen so how many primes are there these are the primes between 1 to 40 okay from 2 to 37 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 23 and so on up to 37 so second step is generate combinations second step is generate combinations let combinations is a null set or null list in the beginning combinations is null list in the beginning okay the input is primes list now find out number of primes 
let n is let n is number of primes let n is number of primes okay now for for i in range first prime to last prime for j in range first prime to last prime okay you need unique, unique combinations you need unique combinations what do you mean by unique combination suppose 1 2 3 4 are there one must be paired with two paired with three paired with four one should not be paired with one paired with one so you need a condition here what is the condition if i not equal to j then paired is this clear are you following it there is a lull in the chat box are you following please please let me know say something okay then what you do is you make a list of primes i and and primes j you make a list of primes i and primes j okay and and append this append this two combinations append these two combinations combinations dot append okay so what is appended the list is appended right so problem is half done a lot to do now print print combinations it is more about syntax than of logic No colon required here. Now, here colon is required. After if I forgot to give indent. Now let us run it and see. One comma forty. So these are all different combinations. Okay, is this clear? So I have seen different combinations. Now I want to combine them into single number. I want to combine them into a single number. Okay. So what I do is I call this as a sublist. Sub is equal to primes i, primes i, comma, comma primes j. Okay, the sublist. Now I add the numbers. I add the numbers. How do I add? I convert. I convert this into a string. I convert this into a string. Okay. Now the numbers have become strings. I would like to join them with blank space. I would like to join them with blank space. Then I would like to convert. That into integer. I like to convert that into integer. Okay, and then this is appended. This is appended to combinations. Okay. 
this is appended to combinations now now print print combinations and let us run this giving inputs 1 and 40 okay is this clear is this clear please respond please say something very chat box so say something so these are different combinations is this clear is this clear so you can map also lavanya this is one way and whatever it is another way okay you can do in both the ways you can do in both the ways miss lavanya is this clear lavanya asking you okay so we got all the combinations now and let us find out how many of them are primes let us find out how many of them are primes how do you find out let uh let uh, say again n is number of combinations n is number of combinations okay now in combinations i want a sub list of primes i call this I call it as a sub primes are are filtered um are called the list i'm running out of names is empty now for i in range number of combinations number of combinations if or we can do one more thing if number in combinations for sorry for number in combinations okay if number is prime if number is prime then append that number to the list append that number to the list so this is how you find out this is how you find out primes out of all the combinations okay now print the list now print the list you get primes of the combination the range is 1 comma 40 1 comma 40 so these are these are the primes from the combination okay is this clear now out of these primes find out minimum one find out minimum one and maximum one okay so previous term is minimum of the list minimum of the list current term is maximum of the list maximum of the list okay now print print both print both minimum term and and the maximum term these are first and second terms of fibonacci series 
फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड टर्म्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक सीरीज फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड टर्म्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक सीरीज फर्स्ट टर्म इज ट्वेंटी थ्री सेकेंड टर्म इज थर्टी सेवन थर्टी सेवन नाइनटीन ओके इज इज क्लियर सो वी वॉन्ट वॉन्ट वी वॉन्ट टेंथ टर्म ऑफ इकोनॉमिक थर्टी फोर्थ टर्म ऑफ इकोनॉमिक सीरीज सो लेट इज राइट ए फंक्शन फिकोनॉक की पास फर्स्ट टर्म सेकेंड टर्म एंड द नंबर ऑफ टर्म्स यू वॉन्ट नंबर ऑफ टर्म्स यू वॉन्ट हाउ मेनी टर्म्स यू वॉन्ट से टी यू वॉन्ट थर्टी फोर टर्म्स ओके फिकोनॉक की प्रीवियस टर्म करेंट टर्म एंड एंड नंबर ऑफ टर्म्स Thirty fourth term. Okay, so this is this is the term you are looking for. The term you are looking for, and you print this term. Is this clear? Is this clear? Can you understand it? Now, let us write. Let us write the Fibonacci function using dynamic programming, using memoization without using recursion. Without using recursion, okay. Define Fibonacci, okay. Say first term, first term, second term, and and number of terms, okay. Is this clear? Is this clear? So instead of calling it as previous and current, we call it as first term and and second term. Okay. So what do you pass? You pass first and and second. Okay. So outside Fibonacci, you don't know what is previous and current. Okay. Somebody else is writing Fibonacci series. Father, somebody. It is only first term and second term and number of terms. Okay. Okay. Now, here, create, create a list. It all zeros in the beginning. Zero for i in range. How many zeros? N plus one zeros. Create n plus one zeros. Okay. The meaning is Fibonacci term one is zero, two is zero, nth term is also zero. Now, fifth zero, that is first term, is first. Okay. Now fifth one. Ah, let us do one thing. This is called the Fibonacci first term. Let us start from first term. Fibonacci second. Okay. Fibonacci second is second. What is Fibonacci zero? Zero. What is Fibonacci zero? Zero. Now, for i in range, you already have first term. You already have second term. Now you need term from third. From third term to nth term. So you should go up to n plus one. Is this clear? Is this clear? Now, fifth. I is equal to fifth i minus one plus Fibonacci Fibonacci i minus two. Okay, is this clear? Now return return nth term return nth term. Is this clear? This is simple most simple most function for Fibonacci. Right? Is this clear? Now done. Everything is done. Let us run it. Say so one comma one comma forty. Where is PT? Let us not print them. Okay, let us run it.
between 1 and 40 okay so you can check those who took mark exam yesterday can check this answer And this is the answer. Okay. This is clear. So let me know, please. Did you understand it? What are the steps? What are the steps? Finding finding primes. Finding primes in range. Next, finding all combinations Next, getting primes from combination Next, minimum is previous term Maximum is current term And then get 34th term of 34th term of Fibonacci series. Okay. Okay. This is code vita problem. If you do it, if you do it, you are a candidate for 25,000 rupees per month job. If you can do more than this, you can be considered for next round as well. Is this clear? Is this clear? Okay. So I take, I take leave now. We will meet on Monday again with some more problems. Okay. Hope this session is useful. Hope you understand all the three problems which I which I discussed. Okay. So thanks for attending. Hope this is an useful a useful session to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.